We have a project directory set from the previous lesson, so let's go to File and Load from the Objects folder our PM underscore head to an object. Let's get rid of the lights, minus key on the keypad, and hide the camera. So all we see in the scene is our mesh. We split this mesh up into several Puppet Master objects inside one model file and each section is only one edge wide. So it'll be interesting to show you how to separate these edges using the same technique in the previous lesson. Let's go into setup view, Let's go to a left view, wheel mouse move, Let's add a meta effector to the scene. Make sure that they're both selected so we can add the mesh to the weight drawing list. Let's add a small effector. Set this effector radius to 0.01, the same as previous, and the field of influence to all connected, so any points it intersects will be highlighted. Now, as we intersect these points, it becomes more helpful to try and hide these meta effectors if they wind up selecting other parts of the object, like teeth or or hair or lips. There's also a problem with meta effectors overdriving the point they're intersecting but not the rest of the selected mesh. So I'm going to try to hide these effectors inside the mouth area because if there's any distortion that's going to be problematic it will be less seen in the mouth instead of on the outside of the character that's going to be seen the most. So we'll start with this first effector and I'm going to change the draw mode of this head instead of weight and edges I'm going to set it to weight and wire. A weight and wire will let me see the interior of the mouth where we're going to run around and take a look. Now, if I intersect points on the interior of the mouth, since we have this set up so that we can select both sides of the section, they'll both start highlighting. Now, here's the problem with our all connected in the meta effectors. They have to intersect a point, and all of the points we have are overlapping other Puppet Master sections. So how do we separate that? Well, here's an interesting way to do that. First, I'm going to tell you that any all-connected meta effector that's intersecting a point, if that point is part of a mesh, it will override all of that mesh connection with the value of that meta effector. So let's duplicate this effector to the second one. Let's just move that down the line. So now it's overriding the first point with the second point's weight. So we're going to go down the line as we've done before. I'm just going to position these around the perimeter of the mouth so that we're adding on top of our effect the same way that we've done on the previous lesson. Use the multiply key on the keyboard to do that. And just move these so that they intersect at least one point on the interior of the mouth. Let's do that and so that's the last one is the lower lip. So now we can turn off this weight wire, go back to weight and edges, take a look and see if we have all of our segments selected all except of course for the head. So that looks pretty good. Everything is selected. So what did I mean when I said that the points will override the previous points? They're each sharing one set of points that are part of two Puppet Master segments. And what's good about this is we can use our constant value that we did in the previous lesson to add the weights on top. So we can override a weight on one segment excluding the previous segment. And this first one since we have six meta effectors, we're going to have six Puppet Master sections. If we divide that by 100%, we wind up with 15%. So this first one is going to have a constant value of 0.15. If you'll notice, it goes right down to 0.15 because the next point that is intersected on this section is getting overridden with a value of 1 on effector 2. And effector 2, of course, is double the value, so we go to 0.3. So 0.3 works. The next effector is not 0.3, it's 0.45, and just work your way down the line. So 0 0.45, 0 0.6, 0 0.75, and then the last one, 0.9. Oh, looks like we're missing one more, so let's multiply that last one. And just move this right out on top of the chin, and it's going to intersect the chin with a 1. And so it's overriding the last selection with a value of 1. So we've defined a gradient, a much finer gradient, and have separated one edge wide meta effector sections by using the overrides in a nest. So I hope this makes sense. So we've separated it and it'll look pretty good. So go into the effects. Let's uh, 
select our head, add the X-form effect to the head. Let's so move this to the same spot underneath the sideburns. And I'll call this one the same thing, jaw. And set our X-form node to pull weight from our meta effector. You can leave the type at static. So now when we go into animate and pick our jaw, we have this really nice gradient going from one to the other. And we've done an even finer separation of our face. Let's go to File and Load, Head2.obj. Go into Setup. Let's add the Puppet Master effect to that. And load our PM underscore head to as the cluster. Convert that object. So now inside Animate, we have a fairly smooth operating face. Dick our jaw, and now our face looks pretty smooth. There's no steps, and if you carry this out to its most extreme on an even higher resolution character, you'll still get a very smooth interpolation. Let's go to File, and let's save this scene into the Scenes folder as PuppetMaster2.fxs.